Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, it is Sunday, September 18th. I uh, just want to get this information out to everybody a week before we start PLCs. Uh, last week, I sat in on a general principles meeting and they covered the following slides. So I want to do that and be as brief as I can and also give you the information that you need. And just know that this is a rollout. It's something we're all expected to do. I think it's something that's been pretty highly anticipated. Our district's been working on this for about three years. Thank you, COVID. It kind of threw at us a little bit of a wrench, but I think we're back on track and I think we're ready to get going here, at least with the start of it. We're not as good as we're going to be, but at least we can get started. So let me go through these slides. So PLC late starts are dedicated to fostering the collective wisdom of staff to strengthen instruction and address structural and institutional barriers inhibiting the progress of some students. And that tells you why PLC Plus is the model that our district chose. It's the only PLC model they can find that had anchors in equity. So that is why we've chosen to go with PLC Plus. The other reason is because of the attachment with visible learning and all the excellent um, information they provide us in the visible learning meta X um, research site. And I will give you guys a link to that too. So you guys can look up best practices and see how effective they are when they're done with fidelity. Okay, moving along here. Um, this kind of gives you the, the rollout, the way it's gone. I'm not going to spend any time on this slide. You can stop and look at it and read it if you choose to. Um, there's a PLC shared folder. I'll show that to you in just a second. There's a note-taking document. There's protocols. There's a short article for leadership team. Um, there's the late start calendar. If you look at the district late start calendar or the district calendar on one page, it doesn't give any PLC dates anymore. That can be confusing for families and that's family access. So we do have our own schedule just for that. Okay. There's 19 dates set aside for PLC meetings. And then the other Mondays are totally individually determined days for certificated staff. Those are your days to use or your hour to use each of those days. There's also a short video. I'm gonna push the video out to our BLT members. Um, it's just a two minute one. And if they wanna show it to you, they can. Um, I think somewhere around here, you're gonna be able to access this if you choose to. And then the target for each PLC will cycle through the five PLC questions prior to just before winter break. So we're just trying to get good with a few things and get familiar. So I want you to feel like you know, we're motivated to do this. I don't want you to feel pressure. Some of the PLCs we have at Auburn High are very high functioning as they are, but we do want to change the way we use our questions. And I'll move on to the next slide. And this is really for the PLC activators or leaders. This is a, an optional way to look at the first PLC on September 26th. If I didn't have a lot of time to spend getting prepared for PLCs on the 26th, I'm probably going to lean into this structure here. And it looks like they give you a couple of options. Okay, I would use one or the other. If you'd already planned out some things for your PLC team and you're fairly grounded in PLC Plus, I would say move forward. Just make sure we're starting to access the five questions. So here's a great optional um, agenda. Please use that again if you haven't had time to really prepare. And then they give you information on next steps. Uh, the one I wanna bring your attention to is the third box on down where it says at Olympic Middle School, September 20th, there's a 90 minute content team leaders, department heads, secondary administrators, a big training there. And it's just for activators, those who will be leading PLCs. Okay, I think some of my colleagues, Brendan, Jeanette, Lori, Tim, have already been talking to folks um, about attending that. I've talked to department chairs. Um, it all is contingent upon your schedules, of course, and I don't know if there's going to be some makeup sessions that really needs to be. So just know that. Um, but anyway, you can read that slide on your own. I'm going to go ahead and go to a different slide. So please bear with me. Okay. The next slide is the PLC shared folder. And you can see there's the information there for the first one. There's a really great uh, 
three page publication on the five questions. If you're one of those people like me, you're very curious why the questions are what they are. Um, I will actually add that to our weekly updates. There will be an attachment. You're more than welcome to take a look at that. Um, there's the individual days and the PLC day calendar. Again, if you look on the district website, you're going to find one that's more generic. It won't have the exact date. So make sure that I will also leave the um, <clears throat> calendars and attachment in today's uh, weekly update uh, or tomorrow's. Expectations of paraeducators, you don't need to worry about that. That's more for administrators, um, maybe some of our department chairs who do have interactions with, with paraeducators and special education and so forth. Um, and then there's some protocols and then you'll notice the uh, PLC plus note taking form. That is a district type. There's no other form. This is a form. So for those of you who are kind of creative and you love kind of developing tools that work better for you, you can do that. But everything needs to be documented on this form. OK, and those need to be uploaded every single week. So anyway, that's the main things. I hope you got enough out of this to help you get going on the 26th and uh, look forward to PLC Plus. Thank you.